Well, good evening, everybody. It's Alexis Gordon again here with the Business Innovation Team for the Economic Development Department of the City of Charlotte. We are so glad you joined us. As you have noticed, you no longer have control over your cameras and microphones unless I call you to the stage. Um, always makes me nervous because now I have to pay more attention, right? Well, tonight you can see that there is the chat. You can still chat with general chat, which is everybody. But if you were in the middle of a conversation right when the 30 second warning came up, you can still carry on your chat with your table. If you click on the general chat under public chat, there's one that says table chat and then your table's name. That will only go to the people at, that you were sitting with before we went into presentation mode. Also, I just want to let you know if you want to open up uh, the video so that you can see who's talking a little bigger on your screen, you just hit the expansion buttons in the left hand corner of the actual video talking. Um, and then to make it smaller, you just hit, hit escape, much like Zoom and WebEx and Teams. Uh, you can check out uh, and still be nosy and see who, who is here by checking the participants list at any time. And then if you have questions for our presenter, um, in the middle of the show, you can always hit Q&A and add a question. If you're curious to see where we are in our times, you can click on the little, it looks like a little calendar invite next to your bubble. That is our agenda for this evening. So you can click on that and see where we are. So again, thank you so much for having us. I am going to go ahead and invite up uh christy floyd to start us off today so christy i'm i'm sending you an invite to turn on your camera and mic hey everybody welcome i'm so excited that you came i really appreciate your time and being here at this event we are so excited as you know may is small business month and we're happy to have you here and to celebrate you tonight um, first, I want to bring you a, a welcome from the mayor, the city of Charlotte's mayor, Vi Lyles. So we're going to listen to her welcome now. Hi, I'm Charlotte Mayor Vi Lyles, and I am so excited that you are here for the networking event for small businesses. We all know that small businesses are the backbone of this country's economy. It's especially true in our city, Charlotte. I want you to know how important it is that we support you so that you can thrive in our city. We want to have an entrepreneur spirit that's valued. We want to celebrate your successes. So today you're going to hear from Roshanda Pratt, who is a leader in influencing and the ability to amplify the voices of businesses like yours. So enjoy the networking and do this good work. We're proud of you. God bless. Well, the mayor said it all, you know, you small businesses are the backbone of our economy and we want to celebrate you all month. Here in Charlotte, this is our 31 days of biz campaign. We celebrate one business every day for the entire month of May. And we are so grateful to have six of those business owners here with us tonight. So first, we're going to hear from Khalil Lloyd, Lim Turner and Maria Kemp. They're going to come up on the stage and we're going to watch their video and then they're going to have a chance to introduce themselves and tell you what this campaign the 31 days of this campaign means to them all righty well good afternoon everyone um i believe i'll just go ahead and talk now and then we'll play the video later um but i have a question for you how many family-owned black-owned video productions can you name i'll wait probably not well now you do um, know someone. My name is Khalil Lloyd and I run a family owned video production company by the name of Lloyd Visuals. Um, we joined forces five years ago uh, with a couple of common goals in mind. Um, one, to develop a vehicle that creates generational wealth and two, to create memorable visuals that stand the test of time. Um, we really are brothers and um, find a way to pursue our passions together. Uh, we've had the opportunity to work with companies such as Airbnb to Honeywell, uh, Charlotte Center City Partners, Communities and Schools, BBC, and a lot of other companies in between. Uh, we're growing, we're developing, and with the thanks of uh, the city of Charlotte, we've been able to continue to grow and scale our business while we're here. Um, in 2020, it was an unprecedented year for all of us. Um, in March, our business completely evaporated 
Um, but I was determined to make sure that we can still thrive. And so we contacted the Economic Development Office um, contacted Ms. Jamila Davis, and she helped us walk through the process of getting certified uh, through HUB. Um, and now we're currently in process of getting certi certified uh, to work with the DOT as well. Um, I also got a chance to take part and be um, uh, a uh, recipient of the Small Business Innovation Fund as well, um, which was put on by Honeywell and Charlotte, Charlotte Center City Partners. And uh, throughout that process in 2020, I also wanted to make sure that I was in reinvesting into my education. And so I got a chance to join the Amped Up program um, that was ran by the, the one and only um, Nikita Allen and, and Jerry and Jackson. So shout out to those powerhouses. Really appreciate all your support and help um, throughout the seven months. And I'm just so thankful and honored to be a part of uh, the city of Charlotte to be able to build my business with my family and to tell stories and meaningful, um, make meaningful connections as well. So again, my name is Khalil Lloyd. You can visit our website at lloydvisuals.com and I look forward to networking you, with you um, after this event. Thank you so much. In one sentence, we create memorable visuals that stand the test of time. What excites me about the work that we do is to be able to connect with community members, other creatives, other artists, entrepreneurs, and just to be able to collaborate and tell stories for people who probably wouldn't have their stories told. One of the biggest lessons that we've learned is to really push through adversity and have a spirit of just resiliency. Uh, 2020 was a pretty tough year for a lot of us. When the pandemic first hit, it completely evaporated all of our business. And in order for us to keep the lights on and keep the business going, we had to pivot and we had to adjust. We just had to get creative, right? And lean into that value of ours. But throughout you know, all of the adversity, we ended up having one of the best years um, in terms of business in 2020. So the thing we're looking forward most to in 2021 is creating original content for ourselves. We've been creating content for clients for over four or five years now, but really want to focus on our brand and building our creativity up and creating short films, documentaries, or short mini clips. Um, yeah, so original content for sure. The advice that I would give to someone that's just starting their first business is congratulations, you've started, and that's the first hurdle that you have to accomplish. Surround yourself with people that are already in the industry, that are like-minded, that can potentially lessen your learning curve, uh, because if you don't come from a background of entrepreneurs or if you don't have any support in the industry, then it could be pretty tough. So I would definitely say surround yourselves with people that are in the industry. Hello, I'm Lim Turner. And I'm Bailey Turner. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today. I, uh, I'm the founder of The Yard Doctor. We've been around for a while, uh, since 1999 uh, when we started. Um, it, was a, it was a labor of love uh, and only supposed to be a part-time gig. Uh, it turned into an opportunity of a lifetime and, and we've been doing it 21 years. 2020 was challenging for us, but we have managed to adjust. Uh, one of the greatest uh, benefits to the yard doctor since I've since it's been around is that we uh, we added my daughter Bailey uh, to the team. Uh, she she is responsible for a lot of the uh, innovation and, and and development that we've had, and so I'll I'll let her give you a brief synopsis of what we're doing now. Uh, before the video kicks off. Um, it's been a pleasure working with my dad day in and day out, and I feel like I've gotten a better handle on the business. So basically, we've been able to expand our social media, our networking, um, and really give customers the option to grow in advance thanks to the wonderful partnerships and wonderful grants that have been given out during the pandemic. And 31 days of business is just an additional highlight to how wonderful this time is and the ability for us to grow and network. Even on the rainiest of days when we're separated, we're still here and we're able to be close together. So we're extremely grateful for the opportunity. Um, and we just look to continue to serve the Charlotte area with the best landscaping possible. Um, as we like to say, we like to grow the community one seat at a time. And this is just one step in that process for us. Here's the video. 
One of our focuses is to help grow the community, and you can't do that if you're in bed. So it's essential for us to get up, get out, and get to work so that we can help grow seeds in people and in the environment. We're a full-scale lawn care provider. That usually entails maintenance, turf management, uh, fertilization and weed control. Uh, we do hardscapes, softscapes, landscaping, landscape installation, and irrigation repair. The Yard Doctor is here to serve. We're here to provide what you need. And being that we're from the community, we're aware of what goes on. And I know that we want to keep service in town and in-house, and that's what we provide for you. We're a family business, as you can see here, I'm with my dad. So we want to make sure that families get what they need. We had somewhat of a, a transition because a lot of people were home. So the maintenance side that we provide was reduced. Uh, and then I guess people's uncertainty as to what their futures held, uh, projects and whatnot kind of pull back. We got the access to capital grant. It, it allowed us to, to buy some material. Uh, we, we were able to purchase a, a dump trailer that had been stolen uh, from us about three years ago. That helped us tremendously with, with being able to serve the customers, not paying delivery prices and all that kind of stuff. With, with our grant, we're able to provide our, our service on a virtual level, and I know that's a concern that a lot of people have during this pandemic. So now they're able to book online, get estimates online, we're able to interact and have a chat. So we have offered more features to them um, through our website and our app that they can use. Hello, everyone. I'm pastry chef Maria Kemp and I am the owner of Beyond Decadence. Beyond Decadence is a gourmet online bakery servicing Charlotte, Lake Norman, and nationwide. Now, we didn't start as an online bakery, but when the pandemic hit, I pivoted. And I'm so tired of the word pivoted, so I started using the word morph, and I'm trying to get that to catch on. So what I did is I morphed because I was originally a pop-up bakery when I moved to North Carolina four years ago, doing events all over Lake Norman and Charlotte and building my network, building my brand, not making sure that people knew me, but making sure, or excuse me, not sure, i making sure I knew people, but making sure people knew me. Because it's not about who you know, it's who knows you. So that way when they have a need, they remember you and will ask for your services. But first they have to get to know you, like you, and trust you. So it is a relationship building process before people immediately start doing business with you. But how I morphed is I went from being a pop-up bakery when the pandemic hit to focusing on doing nationwide shipping. Now, I still did a few neighborhood events, private neighborhood events who were having food trucks in just for their little small community but I needed to expand my network. So in the heat of North Carolina summer, I figured out how to ship a decadent dessert, hint, hint, that's my business name, halfway across the country and have them arrive perfectly food safe and intact and delicious. And that was how I survived the pandemic. Since then, I've continued to work with corporate clients and provide services such as virtual online baking class or online baking experience. It's a class, but it's done via Zoom. The group can be anywhere from three people to 15. So you still can have a contactless experience with your closest friends and coworkers and learn how to bake a decadent dessert in the privacy of your own kitchen. So those are two of the main things that I did as a morph when the pandemic hit. You can order from me online. I'm in the middle of Mother's Day ordering right now, but I'll drop the website into the chat and you'll learn more about Beyond Decadence and some of the decadent desserts that I have available. Uh, before I close and before we watch the video, I did receive grants that were definitely instrumental in helping Beyond Decadence still be here today, but I also received a scholarship, a professional services scholarship, which allowed me to continue enroll in Ignite Bootcamp, which was um, a, the brainchild of Toya Everett, TD uh, Everett LLC. And that was a great opportunity to learn, fill in skills, and meet people that I needed for the next step along the way. And there's been a lot of amazing steps that have happened, but I'll let you go ahead and watch the video and I'll look for your order online. 
I'm passionate about what I do and that's reflected in every dessert that I make and that is definitely reflected in all the five-star Google reviews I have. Beyond Decadence specializes in American gluten-free French desserts and limited vegan desserts. I think it was a little bit different for me because I didn't have a storefront to begin with. So all the pop-up events that I would have normally done were pretty much over. Any of the corporate business I was doing was on hold as well. So what I ended up doing was private neighborhood events where they were inviting food vendors and vendors of different sorts into events specifically for that neighborhood. Neighborhood. So I'm so tired of the word pivot, so I use the word morphed. So how I morphed my business initially was introducing nationwide shipping so I could service people in North Carolina as well as out of state. The nice thing about the grants, the grants that I did receive, is they could be used for you know, operating expenses. You know, there's always overhead, whether your business you know, is running full steam or not. There's, there's rent to be paid, there's you know, commercial leases to be paid, there's bills that just you know, don't stop in a business just like they don't you know, in your personal life either. So they definitely help Beyond Decadence still be here today. I think the best piece of advice I could give a new entrepreneur is to find somebody who's doing what you're doing and if they'll allow you to shadow them and learn from them, it will save you so much heartache when you start your own business. Weren't they fantastic? If you want to see all of the videos, check it out on charlottebusinessresources.com and they are in our video library. There's also a banner across the homepage you can click on to see all the videos. So congratulations to those business owners. They did a fantastic job with their business and they survived 2020. Um, I just wanted to invite Alexis back on the stage. She's gonna introduce our speaker. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Rashonda Pratt, The Rose Show Live. Uh, both she and I work together in television as producers. But just like you wonderful entrepreneurs, sometimes you change careers. And uh, I remember someone earlier was talking about, I think it was Lem, about how it wasn't supposed to become a full-time gig. But sometimes we have a calling, uh, and that is Rashonda. So I'm going to invite her to turn on her camera and microphone and join me up here so she can get started to tell you about the power of visibility, because she's no longer behind the camera. She's out in front. So thank you for joining us tonight, Rashonda. Oh, Alexis, thank you so much to you and the team for inviting me. I'm so excited and pumped to be here. I don't know about anybody else, but I have been so just encouraged and excited about all of the entrepreneurs who shared their stories. And one of the things that I've learned 20 years I know I don't look like it, right? 20 years of working behind the scenes as a television news producer is stories give permission. And so what I want all of you who are here, who took the time to be a part of this event, what I want you to really realize is that everybody's story, everything that they shared today about the pivot or the morph, or the thing that they had to newly embrace in the middle of this pandemic is you have the same permission to do the same. So I'm really excited because I'm gonna talk to you about what everybody had in common and that's their visibility. I wanna talk to you about their visibility. But before we do that, I want to encourage you to take some of your networking, some of the experience that you're learning here, make sure that you engage in the chat, but also make sure you engage on social media. We want to give more visibility to this event, right? So kudos to the team. Go ahead and give them a round of applause. You can hit the emoji there. Kudos to Alexis and Christy for putting together this event. You guys are amazing. I love that. And make sure that you share your experience, okay? We want to make people jealous. Who are not here. I went ahead and said it. <laughs> so make sure you use the hashtag 31 days of biz. Make sure that you use that and talk about your experience, talk about the stories, shout out some of you know other entrepreneurs, but make sure to use the hashtag 31 days of biz. Also, when we go back to our tables, you'll see around the conference area here, the virtual conference area, that there's a way that you can engage with some of our sponsors and some of the good folks who are teaming up with this event. So make sure you click on their videos and engage and learn more about them as well. I'm gonna share with you about this topic 
that has totally tr transformed and catapulted my business. Your visibility is power. There it is. Your visibility is power. I'm going to share for a few minutes. And then after the minutes, and Alexis, I'm going to tap you in here as uh, a former television news producer. Definitely keep me on a time check here. So I'm going to share for a few minutes. And then I'm going to open up an opportunity for Q&A at the end to talk about your visibility. Okay. So let's get into this. I'm going to give you the brief story. So I've been a television news journalist. I tell people since the fourth grade. And the reason why I've been a journalist since the fourth grade, my mother and father are from the beautiful country of Trinidad and Tobago. Shout out to any other Trinidad Trinidadians or any other folks from the Caribbean. Good to see you here. And when I was in the fourth grade, my dad told me, as an American citizen, it's my responsibility and duty to understand what's going on in my country and my community. He said, I should know more about your country than you do. So while my friends, I'm totally going to date myself, are watching Rainbow Bright, the Smurfs and Gem. If you're a millennial and you don't know what any of that is, just Google search it afterwards, but do not put it in the chat. <laughs> but while all my friends were watching that, I grew up watching Tom Brokaw, Peter Jennings, and Walter Cronkite. And he started this passion on the inside of storytelling and being informed of what's happening in my community. And so my journey of television news started in the fourth grade. In high school, I got introduced to, we had a news magazine show in my high school. And my friend says to me, because as you guys can imagine, I was the girl who always got on her report cards, great student, but just talks a lot. And my friend says to me, you like to talk, you should join me on this news magazine program. And so I did. And I realized that, no, this is a career. It's called broadcast journalism. Or it's called being a journalist. And then I went to Winthrop University, Go Eagles in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and I majored in mass communication. And that's where I met Alexis. And during that process and journey, Got my first television news job right there at WCNC in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it was baptism by fire. Everything that could have went wrong in the four years that I worked there happened. 9-11, the war on terror, the Ray Carruth trial, Strom Thurmond died, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr. died. Everything major happened in the four years I was working at that television station. But I realized something, ladies and gentlemen, I realized that facts tell, but stories sell. And I realized that though I was behind the scenes as a television news producer, I really wanted to be in front of the camera. But here was my problem, visibility. I didn't like how I looked on camera. I didn't like my voice. I was intimidated by this whole process. But on the inside, you know, in your knower, I knew that this is where I needed to be. Well, fast forward to working as an executive morning show producer at my local CBS affiliate here in Columbia, South Carolina. And we were just wrapping up the morning show and Gail and Nora were talking about this cool app called Periscope and Meerkat. Meerkat didn't last long, but Periscope gave you the ability to live stream much of what we're doing right now with the palm of your hand, with your, with your smartphone. And what I knew about this, I knew that this was game changing and I knew it was innovative because I knew what it took to really go live, cables, wires, all of these things. But I knew that if I could tap into this and if people could see me, that they would want to do life and business with me. If they could experience me, if they could hear me, they would want to do life and business with me. And so while I was working my television news gig, working the overnights 2 a.m. to 10 a.m., I would leave work and then I would go and do my live video show. And I started to tap into the Row Show Live. It's a nickname I've gotten at every television station I worked at, the Row Show Live. And I started to tap into that. And a lot of my TV friends talked about me. They called me crazy. They said it was a fad. I don't know why she's doing this. This is lame. But what I realized, there was a community of people who were out there waiting for me. See, I'm telling you this story because I want you to understand that your visibility, that you deserve this year to be seen and heard. You deserve that. And there is a community of people who are waiting on you. They're waiting on your product, your service. They're waiting for you to show up. But the problem I understood about visibility is some people treat visibility like it's a option instead of the option. They treat it like 
I can show up today on social media. I can put this information on my website today and then they disappear. We don't see you again. Or I can put this out here and no, it didn't work and I take it down. We don't stick to it to the end. With instead of looking at your life through the lens and filter of this is not a option, this is the only option. And that's what I did. And in that short time, I was able to leave my television news job of 20 years. I've been a full time entrepreneur for two years. In six months, I more than doubled my television salary, teaching people how to leverage and create visibility with live video and local media. Before the pandemic, Many of those TV people who were making fun of me for tapping into this fad were asking me questions like, are you really making impact and influence and income? The things that we see you doing on live video, you know, writing a book that became an Amazon bestseller in 24 hours, having your first speaking engagement in Paris, France. Yeah, Paris. Paris, France, all of that came from tapping into my visibility through live video. Is this real? I was like, you betcha, it is real. And then the pandemic happened. And many of those TV people who were very like, this is not real, Rose doing too much, this is not gonna last. Those same people, you ready for this? Were calling me asking how can they set up their live studio at home or having to buy my book. I think that's sweet revenge. So what I want to talk to you about is the three P's, the three P's of your visibility, because I want you to understand this. And this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and tweet this. You can put it in the comment section. You, my friend, no longer have the right to remain silent. Silence isn't golden with your business. So when you go into a networking event and you don't want to talk to people, you don't want to tell them who you are. I don't want to see braggadocious. I don't want to seem like I'm coming off too strong. Guess what? If you don't come off at all, no one's going to know you, right? So three things that you need to do to position yourself when it comes to your visibility and owning the fact that your visibility is power. Number one, purpose. What is the purpose of you showing up? What what is tied to your visibility? One of the things I tell clients all the time who are very skittish about using live video, and I want you to understand, statistics show 80% of people rather watch live video. 50% of most of the transactions, 50% or more rather, of most of the transactions that are happening online came about through live video. Video is a game changer. Pictures and words together make the perfect marriage. So what's the purpose of me showing up with live video? So remember I told you earlier how I didn't like my voice, didn't like how I looked on camera. You're probably sitting going like, well, this lady looks like she has it together. How does she get her camera confidence? Purpose. I tapped into this simple thought that me showing up is not about me, it's about them. That if I don't show up for my audience, they're not going to get great cookies. They're going to have a bad wedding because they didn't have my cake. I'm just thinking of the last person who shared their story, right? So it's just that serious when it comes to your brand. If they don't have you, what do they have? The alternative. Someone who doesn't give them a really good experience. So I tied my purpose of showing up to the fact of my audience needs me because I'm the solution. I am the answer. Can you put that in the comment section? Can you like turn to your virtual neighbor and say, I forgot to tell you, I'm a church girl too. Can you turn to your virtual neighbor and say, hey neighbor, yeah, you right there virtually, people need you to show up. You're the answer. You're the solution because you are. Number two, position. You have to position yourself as the obvious choice because you are. (laughs) You are. Now, I'm going to do something right quick. I don't believe in telling people the market's saturated. There's too many people doing the same thing that you're doing. Because if I go out of my neighborhood here and I go to the first traffic light, there's a gas station right across the street from each other. They're selling the same thing, but here's the difference. They're selling it differently. So. Get out of your mind mindset of visibility of this whole thing of there's too many people doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah, but they're not doing it like you. They don't have your finesse. They don't have your journey. They don't have your insight experience. So you have to understand that the three P's of your visibility, along with understanding the purpose of your visibility, why you are showing up, it goes to positioning yourself as the obvious choice. Why wouldn't people want to work with you? Why wouldn't they want to do that? So you have to position yourself as the expert, as the thought leader. 
And ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that we lost during COVID was community. That's the big thing people want right now. So if you can position your business, your nonprofit around this thought of, wow, people need community, then people will love you because that's the thing that we're missing. We're missing that community. So how can you position yourself as the expert that you are? Because you are the expert in your field. And number three, three Ps to visibility, profit. Your visibility should be producing for you. We're not showing up on live video. We're not showing up on social media. We don't just have this website as just a landing page. We're not doing all of the things with marketing just to be doing the things and going through the motions. You don't have that email list just to have the names. Some of you, yeah, you right there, you have not emailed your people in a very long time. You know who you are. You don't need to raise your hand. So we don't have those things and we're not doing the exercise of visibility without it producing for us. So for some of you, when it comes to doing a visibility check, I want you to look at some of the things that you're doing in your business and saying, how is this producing visibility? How is this producing profit for us? And if it isn't, maybe it's time to do something different. Maybe it's time to refresh this or revamp this so that way it can produce what you need. So again, real quickly, and I'm opening up the comment section right now. I know Alexis um, is gonna man that for me if you have any questions. But the three Ps to owning the fact that your visibility is power, that you deserve to be seen, heard, and paid this year is understanding the purpose of your showing up, right? Um, one of my dear friends, Dr. Cheryl Wood says it like this, your story is about you, but it's not for you. So understanding the purpose of your visibility, understanding how to position yourself as the expert and thought leader in your lane, in your field. This is a year of collaboration and partnership. And I've learned that even in my business as a visibility coach. So what this person here, all these folks that are here, they're not your competition. They could complement what you're already doing. So how can you position yourself as an expert, even in partnerships and collaborations? And then number three, so important, profit. How is my visibility producing for me? What is the profit that I'm getting from my visibility? These three Ps are so important. Let me tell you a quick story. This is so important, your visibility, because I have just leaned into this mantra. It's one of the things that we, we, we teach and train in our, in our company that your visibility is power, whether you're pitching local media or you're creating a live video show or broadcast or just wanting to hit the live video for the first time. Most recently, I had an opportunity to do my first statewide commercial. And ladies and gentlemen, how did this happen? I didn't go out for this. They found me through a Facebook profile picture. And they liked the picture, thank goodness. And they said, wow, let's go see what else she has going on. And they saw my video. I'm always gonna lean towards businesses using video because video is searchable now. So if you go and type in The Row Show Live on uh, Google, hope you'll check me out, you can see some of my videos showing up in the search engine. So they found a video, they liked it, and they said, go find her and they hired me for this statewide video that's really cool and it's playing all across the state right now. Here's the cool moment. I went to my parents' house a couple of days ago to check on my mom and dad, and my dad said, hey, remember my West Indian father who told me that I needed to watch the news? He said, I was watching TV and I saw this young lady pop up and I said, wait a second, she looks familiar. He says, wait, that's Rashonda. It was the coolest moment, you guys, when my father, who came here to this country with an American dream for his daughter, right? To see his daughter in a statewide commercial. Because you know why? She decided to own her visibility. She decided to realize that my visibility is tied to making impact, influence, and income. And the joy and to see the proud look on my father's face was worth the two days of shooting that commercial. It was a really great experience. Why do I say that? Your visibility is for your business, but much of what I know about you guys, you wanna create legacy. You wanna create impact. 
You want to have influence. And definitely you want to have income because you want to leave generational wealth. It goes back to understanding that your visibility can no longer be a option. It has to be the option. Your visibility is power, and I'm rooting for you to tap into it this year. I want to open up the uh, chat here for any questions or comments. Alexis, I was back timing in my head. How did I do on time? Perfect. Perfect. I still got it. You still got the back timing. <laughs> so um, we've got two. The one question is about grants, and that's something we'll answer during networking. Uh, we'll find just find one of us economic development folks. Uh, of course, you can always check. There are lots of grants and uh, loans and other ways that you can fund your business. Uh, if you go to charlottebusinessresources.com, uh, many of our partners offer a lot of different programs there. So that's my answer for that one. But let's start with this one has the, has the most votes currently. Marketing is probably my worst skill. I know that there is a market for my services, but other than social media, what are some of the other successful marketing platforms or approaches? Um, this one is coming from Ms. Burks. Ms. Burks, one of the things I would say about marketing is understanding what your message is. That makes a world of difference. So remember how I said earlier that facts tell, but stories sell? Your story and your message is so incredible important and key to aligning your message because when you understand the message of your audience then you understand you ready for this where to go find them where do they go hang out so your audience may be on facebook they may be on twitter they may be on pinterest what i can tell you right now even with video because again remember you know i'm the video girl i love video but even with video what's working right now are the short form videos 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and dispel a myth right now. You don't have to dance on TikTok. <laughs> you can have the music in the background and teach someone how to you know, properly set their oven to bake a pie. I'm just making up a narrative here. So one of the things with marketing, it's going back to what I'm seeing a trend is there's community. People are missing that. So looking at the marketing platforms like Clubhouse, which is the live audio drop-in, that's rallied around community. That's been taking off. And then the other thing is text marketing because that creates this funnel and idea of community. And I'm hearing directly from the person that I want to engage with. Did that answer your question? I hope it did. It, it helped I, with me. I was like, okay. oh, I didn't even think about it. I mean, and it's also just amazing to think about all the different kinds of social media platforms. The other day, I was talking to a friend who's a big gamer, and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, Alexis, Discord is totally a social media platform. And I didn't even think about Discord wow. as some place you know, to get out a message. And the thing about that, Alexis, is I'm not of the, the, the mindset of you need to be on all the social media platforms. I don't agree with that. I think you need to treat your social media. What I teach my clients is treat your social media like a channel, like a TV channel. So build one and then add it once you have gotten this together. And whatever that first channel is, it needs to be the place where you know your audience hangs out. You know, I had a client who was over on Twitter and I said, what are you doing over here? And she's like, well, you know, I just felt like I need to have a Twitter page. I'm like, but are your people over there? And she's like, I really don't get an engagement. They're really over on Facebook. and and Pinterest. I said, okay, we'll go over there <laughs> because that's where they are. It's like cheers. You want to go where everybody knows your name and they're so glad that you came. That's perfect. Okay. This one I need as well. How did you get over being nervous on camera? Because we can see that I even mute myself because I'm so used to being behind the scenes. Yeah. So one of the things that I did is there's a couple of things. So number one, I worked on my mindset in the sense that I, I told myself, you're not showing up for you, Rashonda. You're showing up for them. So I took the focus off of me and I put the focus back on the people that I'm called to serve. So I, I really tapped into servant leadership in my mindset. I am coming here to serve. Sales is serving. Me showing up on live video is a way that I serve my people. The other thing that I did, which I later found out, Alexis, that this is a thing, that voice coaches. So I was like, man, I guess I was ahead of my time. But I started spending time talking to myself in the mirror. You guys already do this. 
and I hope you do it in a positive way. You already talk to yourself in the car, you already talk to yourself in the elevator, but I spent time talking to myself in the bathroom. And what I did was not just talking to myself, what trips people up about live video or doing anything that has to do with camera confidence is they start to see themselves for the first time, Alexis. They start to hear themselves for the first time. So what I did was I started practicing in the mirror, listening to myself and looking at myself. So that way it became more comfortable the more I did it. And then also the last thing, being consistent, just showing up, practicing and keep doing it. And the more I was consistent with it, the easier it became. Oh, and one last thing, this is a bonus. I also wanna say, I think you being nervous is a good thing. Here's why. Because I still get nervous. Matter of fact, before I got on the stage here, I was back here like, okay, saying my confession. Okay, I'm ready. I got this. I'm ready to go, right? When you do that, that still shows a level of care. It still shows that I want to show up and give people my best. So that being nervous doesn't is not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just how you reframe it and how you look at it. Uh, it is all about that framing, right? I mean, I yes. think that's something that we've learned for most of our lives as journalists. For sure. Uh, this is another question. It kind of takes off the first question, and this will be the last one we have for you tonight. Um, and it, it comes from Alina. She has a very specialized industry. Um, mm -hmm. She is working on the cannabis industry, which is still underdeveloped in North Carolina. We know uh, Virginia is legalizing and Mm -hmm. Seems to be a discussion around the U.S., um, but she actually specializes in the accounting side of this. She's trying to figure out, like, where does she engage? Uh, she's like, do I go to Instagram? Like, how do you figure out where that market is? How do you well, find out where the conversation is being had? Great question. And I have the answer for you. So I know um, what's happening in the cannabis industry, especially when it comes to social media. Some of you all are getting muted. Some of your content is getting shadow banned, especially in TikTok and Instagram, because a lot of these places are still trying to catch up and they're trying to catch up to what this industry is doing. So one of the places that you're going to want to go hang out is Clubhouse. Seriously. There is a lot of industry insiders in your particular niche that are hanging out in Clubhouse and having conversations and they're looking for you, friend. So I would say go over to Clubhouse, make sure you have a very um, detailed bio and then also make sure you put in there what you're looking for, whether you're looking for clients, you're looking to connect with people in that industry, whatever you're looking for, put that connection request in there. But for you, I would go to Clubhouse. And Clubhouse is tied to your Instagram. So you're kind of growing both at the same time. But again, I know that a lot of people have been blocked and their content been blocked because, again, Instagram and um, TikTok are trying to um, protect the environment, so to speak. But Clubhouse is a little bit more open. And I've seen a lot of rooms with your particular subject matter. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think part of partially it's just searching for those hashtags and trying That's to figure it. out where those folks are. Um, I it. have a couple of friends that are, are always looking for new markets for all sorts of different industries. For sure. So, Rashonda, I want to thank you so much for your time with us tonight. It was so really cool to get to work with you again. Um, sure. and, and thank you so much. Uh, I've dropped your website in the chat, but please drop down your handles for us so we can find you on sure. Facebook and, and everywhere else that you are. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm so excited about the work that you all are doing in your businesses. And you can find me. I like to hang out on Instagram. So you can find me over on Instagram. I and actually all across social media at the Row Show Live. That's no W. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just want to echo Alexis, Rashonda, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. You've shared so much wisdom. I think you have motivated everybody. I see a lot of people in the chat say, oh, you, you just pushed me into action tonight. So thank you so much. Um, we're going to move to our next three uh, videos. We have three more of our 31 Days of Biz Businesses for you tonight. We're going to hear from Ralph Henderson, Tamara Park, and Two in Debt. So let's, let's hear from them. Hello. I'm Ralph Henderson. What do the Denzel Washington and Brad Pitt have in common? You know who they are. 
Thank you for allowing me to be here. And I want to tell you, I am so honored because everyone here has one thing in common and they believe in themselves. And I want you to become the Denzel Washington or the Brad Pitt of your industry. Hey, look, a year ago, I went out of business and I'm an executive who has been in the supply chain space for 30 years. 12 years ago, I started up a business to help other executives become more well-known through trade show consulting and executive summits. And at the beginning of 2020, when the pandemic hit, it shut me down. I could have been discouraged, but with the help of the Small Business Association, the Small Business Technical Development Center, shout out to Robin McIntyre, and Michael Moore and many others, we decided to morph. Thank you, Maria. I'm gonna use that. Because Maria used my tagline, it's who knows you. And it really is. And one of the things I wanna encourage everybody here tonight with is I want you to believe so much in yourself that everybody knows who you are. That is so important. And I just want to say it has been this morphing and redirecting, going from live events to online events, very much like what we're doing right now, that I believe is going to help every one of us. I think the speakers that you have heard already and the ones that you're getting ready to, to hear are going to inspire you and to help you believe even more in who you are and what you're doing. And I wanna end with this. I want you to narrow your niche to widen your market. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is what Maria is doing with Beyond Decadence. Did you hear what she said? She's narrowed into who she is and what she's doing. Uh, you know, we, we will hear from other people who are doing that and it's so important. So please be encouraged and, and I want you to become famous. I want you to be that company, that person when somebody thinks about what they want as, as far as your service is concerned, you're the first person they think of. Thank you to the city of Charlotte. Thank you to the Small Business Association and thank you to everybody who is here. I encourage you to have a great 2021. My company makes other companies famous. People call me the dot connector because what I do is I connect the dots and I do it in a fashion and a form where once we have the process down, they can replicate it over time. I served in the military. I found that processes were so powerful. And when I got into the supply chain space, I saw some processes in the business development area that I could actually work on. And I enjoy helping people develop their businesses using those processes. What I do is I help other companies become more well-known through using the digital platforms of video conferencing and summits. The way I do that is I help them understand how they can develop their businesses using what they already have or pretty close to what they already have. So when the pandemic hit, my business shut down. I did live productions, therefore no one was doing business. Now the good news was when I got the loan in order to help me, I was able to then redirect the business. Along with my business coach, we decided that going back to school was a good idea. And I started taking a graduate program in professional speaking and also acquiring some equipment that would help me do what I do digitally online so that we didn't have to do it live. That was a real benefit to be able to bring those two things together and we continue to bring those two things together in order to make Omnichannel Productions what it will be post pandemic. Hi, my name is Tamara Park, and I am the co-founder of Story Now. And we have this audacious dream of democratizing meaningful video storytelling. And as Roshanda just beautifully spoke about this evening, our stories have power. Each of you have a story to tell. And I just want to share with you two things. First, a little of my 
story. I um, have had the privilege of getting to direct television series, documentary series on five continents and bearing witness to stories that have given me courage and hope um, in the midst of my struggles. And also seeing that these stories are assets and they so often go untold. As Rashad just said, we, so often we're invisible when actually our stories hold power. So I kept asking this question, how do I scale myself? How do I come alongside others to tell their stories? And I had this really pivotal moment in 2018 when I was filming Syrian refugees in Greece and we couldn't take our professional cameras in um, into the camp and then I realized oh my gosh I can film on my phone at higher resolution than these professional cameras and so you guys were living in this crazy gorgeous time in history with technology where each of us have the power of a production house right in our phones and so the vision with story now is to really help you maximize that thanks to charlotte city center partners we were able to get that innovation fund and so we've created the story now app you can download it for free in the app store so it's story now app and we give you a director in your phone to help you get your story out, the stories of your employees, your customers, to do story-driven marketing, short videos that I believe is the attention currency of our day in order to help you get your message out, to be visible, and also to do more great work in the world. People need to hear your stories. I know I need to. And so the second thing I just want to leave you with is I believe community creates capacity. I, and I'm so thankful for, for Christy Floyd and, and the development team and just the reminder with 31 days of business that we have a city, we have a community that celebrates innovation, that celebrates determination and, and boost us business owners and that we can support each other. I don't know about for you, but there's been multiple times this last year when I wanted to give up, give in, and then I was reminded that I had people such as Christy Floyd and James LeVar and others that people who've thrown in their lot with me as a business owner, and we get to throw in our lot with each other, that being a community for one another is going to create greater capacity. So your stories matter. I have been given so much and would love to help you um, and be community for you. So thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight. I am so passionate about helping people tell a great story. I've had the privilege of getting to direct stories on five continents and just seeing how powerful stories are to businesses, nonprofits, individuals. I think every one of us longs to be seen and celebrated. And so I think stories have a way of just opening that up and actually connecting us to our neighbor or to someone, you know, a continent away. It connects our humanity and I think in a way that very few other things can. We're about to launch our first app actually in Charlotte. The Story Now app gives a business or nonprofit everything they need to make a really compelling video. It's just like having a director in their phone. But COVID has been tough with our business. You know two things have really emerged. One is just the invitation to get more creative and then secondly just finding community. I really believe community creates capacity and I'm so grateful for you know the Charlotte business community. I feel has helped me move forward with greater energy in the midst of this really challenging season. Starting your own business I've discovered is not for the faint of heart. Uh, so it is tough and I think it's you know it's exhilarating to have the freedom to imagine, envision something that could make the world better off and actually move towards it. Don't try to do it alone. Find that community, find collaborators, groups of people who um, will journey with you because I think that's the only way to keep us going. Hello, good evening, everyone. I am Tuhin Dutt. Um, I work with Thinking Feet. We provide uh, after-school enrichment in coding, math, English, public speaking, science and engineering for students in grades one through 12. Uh, but really uh, what we do is we are in the business of developing the future you. Um, what do I mean by that? It's uh, if you think about yourself, us, we, 
Um, we are innovators. We think outside the box. Uh, we solve problems. We uh, help move things forward. We don't get um, you know, bogged down by obstacles. We pivot, we morph. Um, we are really creative thinkers. So at Thinking Feet, we are really building the future you. Um, and in a short while, you'll see the video that um, you know, it, it encompasses the amount of energy that our kids um, that our kids have in our programs that we build in. Um, and uh, so it's, it's all about building the future leaders, the future creative thinkers, uh, which is what this group is all about. Um, and that's what you know, uh, wake, uh, gets us up every morning and go to work, um, is to figure out what else we could do for our kids uh, that will propel them towards uh, the next generation of leadership. Um, I also have another offer to present to any of you who would like to take us up. Uh, thanks to the Charlotte City Partners we um, and the grant, we are launching a program where our high schoolers will be learning a full stack web development. Um, and as part of that, once they finish their course at the end of the summer, they are going to be taking up web development work for uh, businesses like yours. And it is going to be completely free of cost for you. It's going to be completely free. It gives an opportunity for our students to give back to the society. Um, and at the same time, learn from each of you your different stories, your different experiences um, as, as a customer. So uh, that we are very excited to be launching that this summer uh, we have a class already, you know, they're ready to go. Um, at the end of the summer, we would love to have them work with some of you to build your websites for free, completely hosted, completely designed from end to end for free. Uh, do look us up. I think my colleague Jordan just um, sent out the email address on the chat window. If any of you would like to write to us, we would love to talk to you about that. So again, thank you to the Charlotte City Partners. Thanks to all of you. I had an opportunity to meet many of you during the networking session. Uh, it's a great feeling to be in your presence. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, it's an honor to be here. Thinking Feet provides uh, education enrichment for kids, grades one through 12 in coding, robotics, math, English, public speaking, science and engineering. Uh, and most of all, we appeal to the diversity of creative thinking in kids. We are currently the largest coding and robotics enrichment provider in Charlotte, and we have done that by constantly challenging ourselves at what else could we do for the kids. We try to constantly reinvent ourselves every six months. So what gets me up in the morning is what's new for the kids that we can bring to the table. So when we bring it to the kids and we see the light bulbs go, on, go off in their heads, that's an amazing feeling. I love helping kids um, find their passion and something that they can get into and really get in depth into something that is going to further them in life. We started offering online classes about four years back. And when COVID hit, we were able to move everything virtual in three days. And partly it was because we had already had experience doing that. Uh, we just, you know, we hardly slept those three days and we made it happen. I think something that's exciting is the idea that we now have a platform to be online and we have um, an ability once COVID is where we're safe to be back in public. We can have our kids in school and we can also have some things going online to reach a lot more kids because they might not necessarily be in this area now. Uh, believe in your strengths uh, and that's the reason why the thought has even occurred to you to do this. I would just say find something that you enjoy that you think that others will enjoy so that you can bring that passion to other people. I just want to thank everyone again, all of our small business owners for being here tonight, all the wonderful videos. These were all done by Eric. He's out there in the audience. So when I release you back into the networking heaven that is Remo um, for virtual spaces, then you please go seek out all the people who had videos today and uh, make some more connections uh, and, and 
connect because that is why we're doing this today. Uh, one of the things that I love about Charlotte as a city and a community is that we have so many wonderful businesses here and it's all about networking and connecting with each other to make sure that you are really finding that community as Rashonda talked about uh, because you guys are also going to be each other's clients as, as much as you are also here as business owners. So I am going to end our presentation here and again thank you all for joining us and we have about a half an hour uh, for networking but don't fret if it looks like things are going really really well i might be able to extend it a little longer past that so thank you again everyone for joining us tonight and we'll see you on the network floor <laughs>